Hey you guys, how's it going? Brandon from Singletons back here. Today I got another deck for you. This is one of my favorite commanders of all time. This is Winota, Join Our Forces. This is an aggro strategy, putting tokens into play and then using Winota's ability to put even more creatures into play, attacking all of our opponents and wiping them out as quickly as possible. Let's go ahead and take a look at Winota. Winota, Join Our Forces, is two red white for a legendary creature 4-4 human warrior. Whenever a non-human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library in a random order. So Winota really lays out a great foundation for what you want in your deck. It's an aggro creature deck, so you want a lot of creatures in here, and because of her ability, you're going to want to make sure you've got a lot of non-human creatures and human creatures, so you've got to pay attention to your creature types. Also, because Winota is 4 mana, you want to make sure that your non-human creature sources are 3 mana or lower. You want them onto the battlefield and ready to attack as soon as you cast Winota. On the flip side, all of your humans can be as high mana costs as you want because you're going to be playing them for free. So with few exceptions, you want your curve to start with your non-human creatures at 1, 2, and 3, and then you want to start putting in humans at 4 and above. Let's get started with our non-human creature sources, starting with the token makers. We're going to go by converted mana cost and kick things off with Raise the Alarm. This is an instant for 1 and a white, create 2 one, 1 white soldier creature tokens. Moving forward, there's something very important to understand about magic and the way Winota works. Take a look at any 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token and you're probably going to think it's a human, but it's not. Why not? Because it doesn't say it is. It doesn't matter when a card looks like a human or not. If it doesn't say human on the creature type line, then it's not a human. These 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens are counted as non-human creatures by Winota, so them swinging will trigger her ability. Keep that in mind as we look at some of the other cards going forward. Moving on, we've got Goblin Instigator, basically the same thing. One in a red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin that makes a 1-1 one, one Goblin creature token. Spirit Bonds is one in a white for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay white. If you do, put a 1-1 one, one Spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. You can also pay one in a white and sack a Spirit to give a non-Spirit indestructible until end of turn. Take note that whenever you put humans into play off of Winota's ability, you can still pay the white to put a Spirit into play. Carekeep is a land, so technically zero mana, but it costs one in a red and tapping it to activate an ability. Put a zero one red cobalt creature token into play. Zero power means these cobalts won't actually deal any damage, but swinging does still trigger Winota. Moving up to the official three drops, Legion Warboss is two in a red for a two two goblin. At the beginning of your combat, you put a token into play that has to attack and gains haste. Keep this guy back to protect him and you're gonna make your own little army of one ones that are all gonna trigger Winota. On the reverse of that is Cranko, 10th Street Kingpin. He'll make you 1-1 Goblin Creature tokens equal to his power, but he has to attack for that ability to trigger. Anax, Hardened in the Forge, will make you 1-1 tokens whenever your non-token creatures die, and if those creatures had power 4 or greater, you make 2 tokens. Oketra's Monument is 3 mana for an artifact that'll make your white creature spells 1 less to cast, and whenever you cast any creature spell, you'll get a 1-1 white warrior creature token with Vigilance. Again, looking at the token, you'll think it's human, but it's not. It's just a warrior. So you typically don't want to go past three mana with these non-human creatures, but when you've got something good enough, it's okay to make an exception or two. Sram's Expertise is two white white for a sorcery to make three 1-1 one -one tokens, and as the spell resolves, you may cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. Last on the list is Assemble the Legion, 3 red white for an enchantment, at the beginning of your upkeep put a muster counter on it, then make a number of 1-1 one, one soldier creature tokens equal to the number of muster counters on it. Soldiers, not human soldiers. Now not all of our non-humans can be token makers, so let's get into some non-humans with utility effects. These cards have great abilities for our decks, but they do still trigger Winota when they attack. Rog Rock is 0 mana for a 0-1 Kobold with First Strike, Menace, and Trample. Sure, he doesn't deal any damage, but you can always play him before Winota, and all of the keywords will actually come in handy later. Once you've got a bunch of creatures in play attacking, Pyre Heart Wolf and Hell Rider will help push through even more damage. When Pyre Heart Wolf attacks, it's going to give Menace to all of your attacking creatures. Now this ability triggers at the same time as Winota's, so you want it to go on the stack first, so that by the time it resolves, all of your humans from Winota have already been put into play, and they'll get Menace too. And then Hellrider says that whenever a creature you control attacks, Hellrider's going to deal 1 damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. It's important to note that the humans you put into play off of Winota are already attacking, so they don't initiate an attack, thus they don't trigger Hellrider. Last up for the non-humans, we've got Cartographer's Hawk, Simeon's Spirit Guide, Burnished Heart, Boreas Charger, and Solemn Simulacrum, all of which can ramp you and have the potential to trigger Winota. 
So now that we've got a bunch of Winota triggers, let's take a look at what we're actually getting from it, starting with humans that make more non-human creature tokens. Pia and Karen Nalar is a 2-2 human that comes into play with two 1-1 Thopter creature tokens, both of which can trigger Winota on the next turn, and you can pay two in a red to sacrifice an artifact and deal two damage to any target. Geist Honored Monk is a human whose power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. It also has Vigilance and enters with two 1-1 White Spirit creature tokens. Silverwing Squadron is also a human with power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. It also has Flying and Vigilance, and whenever it attacks, create a number of 2-2 White Knight creature tokens with Vigilance equal to the number of opponents you have. Lena, Selfless Champion, is a 3-3 that makes a number of 1-1 White Soldier creature tokens equal to the number of non-token creatures you control when she enters the battlefield. You can also sacrifice her to give creatures you control with power less than hers indestructible until end of turn. When Evangel of Heliod enters the battlefield, it creates a number of 1-1 White Soldiers equal to your Devotion to White. Just a quick reminder, your Devotion to White is the number of white mana symbols on all permanents you control. Lastly for this category is Captain of the Watch, a 3-3 human with Vigilance. It enters with three 1-1 White Soldier creature tokens and gives all of your other soldiers plus one plus one and Vigilance. Just a quick side note about these Vigilance creatures, keep in mind that when Nota puts them into play tapped, even though they have Vigilance, but then on your next turn when you go to attack with them, remember that they have Vigilance and don't tap them. For the last of our creatures, let's talk about the humans with utility abilities and abilities that are going to win us the game. Hitting our land drops is super important, especially in our colors and especially on a budget, so it's always great to have Verge Rangers. 3-3 three, three, first strike, you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and if an opponent has more lands than you, you can play lands off the top of your library. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control with power 2 or less, Mentor of the Meek will let you pay 1 mana to draw a card, and then Magus of the Wheel says 1 red to tap and sacrifice. Each player discards their hand, then draws 7 cards. Benalish Marshal and Kongming Sleeping Dragon are both humans that give other creatures you control plus one plus one, and then Gold Knight Commander is a human that says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. Anthem effects are great in token decks, and when you're using Winota's ability to put humans into play that make more tokens with them, Gold Knight Commander can easily pump your board plus six to even plus ten per combat. Audric Master Tactician is a 3-4 with first strike. Whenever it and at least three other creatures you control attack, you choose which creatures block and how they block. We're always going to be swinging a ton of creatures, so we'll pretty much always get to choose how blocks happen. And then all of the various keyword abilities that we have on all of our creatures are really going to come into play with Audric's other form, Lunark Marshal. This Audric basically says that at the beginning of each combat, if you have a creature with first strike, all of your creatures get first strike. The same is true for Flying, Death Touch, Double Strike, Haste, Hexproof, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Skulk, Trample, and Vigilance. Gerard, Weatherlight Hero, is board white protection. It's a 3-3 with first strike. Whenever it dies, you can exile it, and then you return to the battlefield all creatures and artifacts put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. A new addition from Strixhaven, Blade Historian is a human with attacking creatures you control have double strike. It's super important here that Blade Historian doesn't have any kind of triggered ability and it doesn't cause other things to trigger. It just says that if your creatures are attacking, they have double strike, which means anything you put into play with Winota will have double strike. And finally, the human powerhouse Angrath's Marauder says that whenever a source you control deals damage, it deals double that damage. Winds really come out of nowhere when you can slam this one down. So that's pretty much it for the core of the deck. Other than these cards, you're just going to fit in the standard removal, protection spells, artifact ramp that you can find in red-white. But one more card I do want to call attention to that's super important for this deck. Penance is two and a white for an enchantment. It says put a card from your hand on top of your library. The next time a black or red source of your choice would deal damage this turn, prevent that damage. The ability here is pretty lackluster, but the cost to activate that ability is super important. If we have a human in our hand that we'd rather put onto the battlefield with Winota, we can at instant speed put it on top of our library to guarantee we'll hit it with a Winota trigger. And since we're playing red, we can always target something we own rather than rely on whatever our opponents have. And that's the deck. That's $50 Winota tokens, focusing on putting as many creatures into play as quickly as possible and rushing everyone down. As always, prices are pulled from TCGplayer.com and there's a deck list down in the description. And let me know what you think about the deck in the comments. Is there something you like, something you didn't like, something you think I should add, or if you've got a commander that you'd like me to look at in the future, post it down there. I'll take a look. Let's see what we can do. All right, that is it for Singletons this time, and I will see you all later.